three, two, hey, good morning. Oh my gosh, I keep saying that. I mean, this entire live stream is gonna be me just going, good morning, good morning, good morning. So as you can see, I decided to be all brave and wear my blue lips today because I, again, am just telling you all that you have to try new things. So I listened to all of your suggestions and I, um, and I um, did a little lip scrub this morning. And I also got, when I was at Sephora, I got this product from Lawless. And this is a Forget the Filter Overnight Lip Plumping Mask. And what this does, this is supposed to smooth out your lips, kind of plump them a little bit and moisturize them. So I used this last night and I um, have nice smooth lips. And then I used my little sugar scrub this morning and the lipstick applied much better than it did yesterday. Um, Naomi, let's see here. Good morning. What's, um, oops, nope, nope. I don't want to do that. We have our first question. Bernadette says, good morning. What was behind your decision to go short? I love it. All right, well, my, the reason that I went super short, I had short hair before, but the reason that I went super short is just because I didn't feel like my hair was representing who I was. Um, that, oh, yay, Dags Alexis Kyle. You're gonna make me cry. All right, I'm gonna get to this comment in just a minute, but sweetheart, you are literally gonna make me cry because you are so inspirational to me. I absolutely love you. And um, I want you to know how incredibly important you are to me and to my platform and to just this world in general. So I absolutely love you. Um, so Lauren's like, yeah, I told you it would work. Yeah. So now here's my question. And I'm going to get back to why I, I um, went super short on my hair. But in all honesty, and I'm asking for your opinion, so I would really like it. And you're not going to hurt my feelings if you say no. But what's your general consensus on the blue lips? I mean, would you thumbs up, thumbs down? Would you, um, um, <laughs> yeah. so then the, our love is mutual. So, I mean, do you like it? And it's just the whole thing. It's, it's like, and I'm asking your opinion. So I'm not gonna be upset if you say you don't like it because I'm genuinely curious. See, to me, it's fun, it's new, and it just allows me to, Again, just be like, wow, I'm going to be bright, bold, and brave, and I'm going to try new things. So let me know what you think about my blue lip. Okay, Anne says she loves it. All right, Annie. Sorry, Annie. All right, so why did I go super short? Okay, Courtney's digging it. All right. Well, I had to mute something. I had to mute somebody um, on TikTok while I did. I was warming up on TikTok, and somebody told me I was ridiculous. And I'm like, I'll show you how ridiculous I can be. And so I muted him, and he went away. Um, Courtney, uh, no, no, not Courtney, but Dag, for some reason this, this um, program doesn't allow caps, but I, you, you just caps away, sweetheart. Okay, so um, again, love it, love it, love it. My hair, Courtney um, has really short hair also. Now, okay, so I was doing all of these posts. Oh my goodness, I forgot my microphone. I hopefully you all can hear me. I got so excited um, about my blue lips, I forgot my microphone. So anyway, um, I was doing all of these postings and all of these social medias and I kept on getting over and over again a comment. I'm gonna put lip, lip gloss on. This is just a... So that's it with lip gloss. And I don't know if I just smeared it all over my face. <laughs> that, this is just how this live is going to go today. So I kept on, um, Connie likes it. Did you see the links for the blue lippies I sent you yesterday? No, Courtney, I didn't, but I will definitely go on and I will look for that today. So, and I thank you very much. So what I kept on doing is, is I kept on doing all these posts and where I would have my outfits and all of this. And time and time and time again, I would, um, I would, let's see here, that chair is putting in work. Thank you, Courtney. So, um, 
so time and time and time again, I would get all of these comments on my social media posts about how my hair, um, how my hair just didn't match my personality, how my hair didn't match my energy. And I got a lot of comments that my hair actually made me look older. And I agree. Um, I don't, you know what? I, truthfully, I think he was calling me fat. Um, and I just, my, Courtney, my amazing moderator on TikTok just had to ban somebody because his comment was, is that that chair is really having to put in a lot of work. So he was trying to body shame me and tell me that I was, um, heavy and that the chair was suffering because I was sitting on it. And you know what? Be gone. And hopefully you just didn't mute him, but you blocked him because, oh, you know what? And, um, Courtney, feel free to when people say something really superly rude like that, you can just block them because they don't even deserve to get to see what I'm saying anymore. So anyway, so I got, um, I, I kept on getting all of these comments and truthfully, I had to agree with them. I had to agree that my hair was making me look older and it was not matching my energy. While it was a very cute haircut, it did not match my energy. So, um, I just um, decided one day that this is what, this is who I was. This is who I was on the inside. And not only was I like not representing who I was, but I have really thick, like kind of weird wavy hair. And so I couldn't really make it curly and I really couldn't make it straight. So I just ended up with this like weird looking like um, tumbleweed thing on my head. So anyway, I thought that, a more of a buzz cut represented a little bit more of my edgier kind of like um kind of rocker kind of energy vibe so i did it um let's see here courtney dags yes you're definitely my favorite thing to that's my favorite thing to do right now okay dag says i'll add an iridescent and holographic loose eyeshadow powder pigment on top of black and it's badass see i'm gonna have to get a black lipstick and do that and try that next so we will, um, we will be trying that. Uh, let's see here. Connie says your hair looks absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Connie. Um, Dag says, whoever said that, man, you know what, karma, your hair being short has helped me feel more confident rocking bald. Wigs are fun, but I feel like they don't look right, but I know now it's me. Absolutely. And, you know, we get really hung up on hair. We get hung up on hair because hair, um, because hair, hair in society, hair represents youth and hair represents, you know, being young and, and like, um, you know, young and youthful and fertile and all of that stuff. So we think like if we have no hair, short hair, or like, um, bald hair, that that represents that we are somehow not young and youthful. And it's not that way anymore. And you know what? And again, who wants to live by rules society? And um, I sure as heck don't. So absolutely, sweetheart, you just go. Okay. So Courtney um, says that Duck City from TikTok is asking, what's the pain level of your hand tattoos? Okay. Really weird. I have both of my hands tattooed. Now this black and gray one, I would put this as moderate. This was like a jalapeno pepper. I actually enjoyed my tattoo session and um, I, I talked, I laughed, I watched him tattoo my hand and I absolutely had a great time. This hand right here, the color hand, my dominant hand, completely different experience. Now on this one, um, much more color, much more work and this one hurt much more. So it's really gonna depend on what design you're getting, whether you're getting black and gray, whether you're getting color. And I personally think your healing is going to depend on whether it's your dominant hand or not. Dominant hands are much harder to heal the non-dominant hands because we're constantly moving it and constantly um, just irritating it. All right, so another question from TikTok is, what kind of music do you like? All right, I was thinking about that the other day as I was driving down to San Diego because I like 
all sorts of music. I mean, I was totally rocking to 70s country music on the way to San Diego the other day. I like George Jones, Johnny Cash, you know, just Waylon Jennings, just real old school kind of stuff. And then, um, but I also like newer stuff. I love Mathis Yahoo. I love George Ezra. Um, I am all about um, Young Gravy. And I love Cardi B. And it's like, I have such an eclectic way, uh, uh, just uh, just from one end of the spectrum to the other kind of music taste that um, it goes all over the place. Let's see here. Um, I got my hair buzzed after I saw you with one and I loved it. Claire, that's amazing. And here's the thing is, is I've never seen anybody get their hair buzzed and then be like, I hate it. I've seen so many TikToks where people are like, I'm going to go buzz my hair. I'm scared. And as soon as they buzz their hair, they're like, oh my gosh, this is like a new me. It's so empowering. It's so fresh. And it's really amazing um, how freeing having a buzzed head is. I, I can't even describe it. Um, Linda says, love your hair. Can't picture you any other way. No, neither can I. I really cannot see, um, myself back with hair. Let's see. Ellie Fisher says, I would feel like I would hate it. I have a flat head. See, and that's just the thing, Ellie. It's, it's like we get, I thought I had too big of a nose to have a pierced, to have a piercing. You know, I thought my head was too big to, to shave it. And sometimes we are so hypercritical on ourselves that we don't allow ourselves to like things. Now, I'm not telling you you're wrong and that you should buzz your hair, but I'm just saying when you make these decisions, don't be really super critical on yourself. Um, Claire says, people say it makes me look younger. And it really does does. And I personally think that since I have buzzed my hair, I've experimented more with makeup. I'm brighter with makeup. Um, I am just, oh gosh, I, I try new styles. For some reason, me having that buzzed hair, and I don't know if it's the whole like ideology of like, you're a badass if you buzz your hair, or if it's just that I'm truly seeing me for who I am. But my style, my makeup, my whole everything has definitely elevated to the next level after buzzing my hair. Now, Dags, I want you to know Cord now C Cardi B. Let's get to Cardi B for a minute. If I had a, a feminine role model who was currently alive that I actually absolutely idolize is Cardi B. And that woman is such an amazing force. She is driven. She has amazing work ethics. Sometimes I get really um, like tired or down on myself. And then I will see all the things that she posts. And I see all of these things that she does. And she's an inspiration to me. She's an inspiration to me to get up and to do things. And so not only do I absolutely love her, her music, but I love her as an individual. And I think she is a great role model for a strong woman. So Cardi B, if you're out there, you got a really big fan with me. This little 58 year old woman thinks you are a complete badass and my role model. So um, let's see here. Dag says you're amazing at makeup GI Jane style. It's what I strive for. Absolutely. And you know, and it, the thing is, is that to me, Sometimes we get so, again, stuck on, hello, Sweden, um, hello, Linda, that sometimes we get so stuck on the ideology of, um, of what we think that beauty standards are, we forget what we think our own beauty standards are, and that's what we need to go by. Dag says she's also a wonderful mom. I think so, too. I really, really, you know... Very rarely am I ever like, oh, Cardi. I mean, I think she's amazing. So that is why I buzz my hair, and that is why I continue 
to buzz my hair. And that is why I can't see myself without a buzzed haircut. I absolutely love it. Deborah says, love your sleeves. Thank you very much. I absolutely love my sleeves. And I have to tell you, when I first started my tattoo journey, like um, 28 years ago, I never in a million years thought that I would end up with as many tattoos as I have ended up with. But I have, and um, I absolutely love them. In fact, I got a, another, we'll talk about more of these, um, um, another, these comments that I get about my tattoos on Tuesday, but I am just, you know, it, it, the louder and the bolder I get, the more comments I get um, on how old I am with tattoos. So on Tuesday, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about age and tattoos, not only like, are you too old for one, too old for your first one? If you're younger and you're worried about them looking, how they're going to look when you're older, um, um, th that's what we're talking about on Tuesday. Okay, Dag says, sorry, there was one an another part before saying Cardi B, but I can't see it. I was saying how um, electric um, with music. I love all my country. You mentioned I grew up on the Appalachian Mountains. I love 70s and 80s punk, especially UK then. I love Frank Zappa then and Cardi. Um, and Cardi. Yeah, absolutely. See, I am all... <sighs> And nothing against country music. If y'all like country music, I mean, that is, that is, I say each to their own with tattoos, each to their own with fashion, and each to their own with music. But I just don't understand the country music for today. And, um, uh, but that's like I said, each to their own. And that's just my, that's just my thought on country music today. So if you're out there, I don't really mean to insult you, but that's it. Deborah says, I'm 62, would love sleeves, but... Um, you know what, sweetheart, I'm saying right now, it's like, I don't think you're ever too old to have sleeves. And I don't think you're ever too old for self expression. And, you know, and the only thing I would suggest you do is just take your journey at each as it as it grows. I mean, you don't have to walk into a tattoo shop and be like, one sleeve to go, please. But you can you can add to your sleeve as life opens up. And as you want to tell your story on your skin. And if it turns out to be a sleeve, then it, it's a sleeve. And if it stops wherever it stops because you choose to stop it there, that is 100% um, your tattoo journey. And there is no right or wrong when it comes to tattoo journeys. Okay, so another question that I get all the time is, um, why did I start a social media channel? And why I started it um, is... I started social media back in 2019 with this idea. Um, I was talking to Robert one night at dinner and um, Robert's very, very um, knowledgeable when it comes to social media and things like that. So I was talking to Robert and I'm like, you know, what it'd be really cool is if I started an Instagram channel and said, um, I would like to show women my own age, my unique style. You know, I want women to know that just because you're my age doesn't mean that you have to dress a certain way. So Robert's like, yeah, you should. And then I'm like, you know, I was like, I'm 58 now. So I was like 55, 56 then. And I was like, I, I want to retire in like 15, 10, 15 years. And so if I, um, if I start social media now, maybe by the time I retire, I'll have a little income stream coming in to help supplement my social security. That's why I started social media. And so little did I know by starting on Instagram, I mean, I built a nice little following. I think I had maybe, oh gosh. Are you still there? Okay, I almost lost TikTok. Hello, TikTok, are you still there? Are you still there? Are you still there? All right. TikTok should be back any moment. And they're back. Okay. So I was like, um, I, I had a nice little following on Instagram. I, like I said, I think I had like 4,000. I know a call came in, but you're back. Um, so I had about 4,000 people. And then I did my first TikTok. I gathered up all of my energy and I did um, a TikTok and I it's been history ever since. And my 15 year plan turned into a two year plan. 
And I since um, have retired from my corporate job and I'm now full time on social media. So um, CJ, yes, I'm having a great day. So I, um, that's why I started. I started in anticipation and hopes of just sharing my kind of little bit of a different style. And it has just blossomed into this amazing platform that I have such a beautiful, um, a beautiful platform. I mean, I love my platform. Now, here's a little unknown fact that I'm going to tell you. And, um, oh, Okay, yeah, no, we can't post links either, hun. So I got like, my little stream limit. I don't have a moderator on YouTube. So I have like all these rules um, built into the program. So if you ever get like a little message from Streamlabs, it's just because it's there to keep me um, to keep us all safe. So now here's a little unknown fact that you might not know about my social media channel that I'm going to share with you today. But across all channels, TikTok, YouTube, which by the way, I want to take a moment and I just want to say today was a milestone for me on YouTube. And this morning I woke up and I have 19,000 followers on YouTube and I am so excited. It's been such a great journey and it's just kind of blossomed into this amazing platform and I'm really um I'm really just really proud of that. I'm really proud of um, I'm really proud of the journey that we have been on. Kim says I need to find you on YouTube. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same um, username. It's gray hair and tattoos. I have the link in my link tree, but if you want to just search it, I come right up. But what I was saying is, is that between Instagram, TikTok. Um, um, Dag said, yes, ma'am. I'd also love to um, help if possible way I can. You know what? I will definitely message both of you when we're done. And yeah, let's get, um, you know, I haven't had any sort of um, any, I haven't had to block anybody on YouTube, but that doesn't mean that is not going to happen. Um, okay. Um, Emma says, so excited to finally make it while you're live. Always love your content. Keep shining, Lonnie. Thank you so much. So here's the statistic that I'm so excited about. All right. It's between Instagram, Facebook, which is very little, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. I have close to 1.2 million followers. Now, here's the kicker is that 90% of those followers are women between the ages of 18 and 35. And that means we have just an army of young women who are, it's so cool. And I have people all the time, like if I am in, being interviewed or something like that, they're always like, well, why don't, um, why don't you have more women your own age following you? And I'm like, I don't, I mean, I don't have the exact answer because I've never done a poll, but to me, I think I have a lot of women between those age brackets of 18 and 24 or 18 and 35, because I'm showing like a, like, uh, hey, this is what your future can look like. And a lot of times women my age, and I'm not saying this that, that all women are like this, but I'm just saying a lot of women my age, I make really uncomfortable. Um, stream. I didn't post a link or try to. I'm so sorry. No, you know what, Dad? Like, don't even worry about it. That's the second time that that's happened. Um, so I'll have to figure out something behind the scenes, and I'll make sure. But you just keep on, you keep on commenting, and you don't worry about Streamlabs. So I just think that it's because, you know what, it's like I was saying yesterday, as a woman over 50, we need to be inspirational for those women who are younger to show what being in your 50s can look like. And I really think that um, that, that is why. So there you go. Now, another question um, that I was asked is, what is my favorite childhood memory? And to tell you the truth, I don't have um, like a ton of them. I had a very difficult childhood. I, I love my parents immensely, but in the dictionary of um, easy childhood, I was not a part of that. But that doesn't mean that I don't have fond memories. I mean, I do have some fond memories of my childhood, but I have to think probably my favorite one is... Um, we, I grew up down in San Diego, so every summer the Del Mar Fair would be a thing. And back in the 70s, 
Um, and even the early 80s, it was like a really cool thing. I think it's super crowded now and it's a little bit different, but um, it was a lot of fun. And I can remember going with my mom and dad and my sister. And then there was like funky rides back then. I mean, it wasn't so much like the rides that they have now, but um, they had like a do-it-yourself ride. And I'm going to try to explain what this ride is. All right, you would get into a cage and you would stand there and you would have to do your body motion and go back and forth, all right? And your body motion would move the cage. And ideally what you would try to do is you would be, you would move it so much that it would go around like that, all right? And then you could go back around the other way. And my dad absolutely loved that ride for some reason. So it would always be, we would get in there and he was very like meticulous about this. We had our assigned jobs and we listened to him. And when he said, move, you moved. And when he said, shift, you shifted. And we would get that cage just going up. We would stop it. And then we'd go back around the other way. And then we'd go back this way. And we had it down to such a fine art that the, um, the carny wouldn't kick us off because we were attracting so much attention. And it just made my dad feel so good to be on this ride that um, it was just, it would, it would be like, it was just really cool. And it was just like one of those times that I can remember like interacting with my mom and my dad, um, it was, um, it was, it was just a happy, warm memory. And I love it so much. Now, thinking about my childhood in the Del Mar Fair, you fast forward to like, I don't know, eight years. And me and my best friend in high school are walking around the fair trying to challenge people to a drinking contest that we could drink a beer faster than them. Here we were, two 16-year-old girls challenging people in the beer garden. And sure enough, people were giving us beers and we were beating them. So, And then you wonder why I turned into an alcoholic when I was older. But it was a lot of fun. You know, it was a lot of fun. It was a good childhood memory. Um, I have been back to the Del Mar Fair. I have never done that right again. And I'm sober, so I no longer challenge people to a beer drinking contest. So there's that. Now, Dag says, um, do, do, do. what's your favorite food? I make homemade teas, and I'd love to create you some customized teas. Ooh. Ooh, how very cool. Well, I, my favorite food since I am a vegetarian is chocolate. Um, I know that chocolate is not a, um, isn't a food or is it a food? Would you consider chocolate a food? I mean, it's something I eat, but definitely chocolate is probably my number one. And it's something that I have to stay away from. Um, Okay, so Courtney, oh, you guys are trying to figure it out. I don't know. She's really fancy with her with her um, YouTube. Uh, oh, very cool. Yes, Courtney, I love her. So you are going to love her also. All right, another question I got is, what was my favorite class in high school? Now, mind you, I grew up again in Encinitas, which was right um, right on the beach. And for two years for PE, I took beach jogging. And now in theory, you think, oh, that's really cool. You know, you, you drive down to the beach and you run down the beach and you get credit for it. And um, in theory, that's what I should have done. But what I actually did is my friend and I, again, my same friend from high school, I'm still friends with her today. I can't believe we actually made it out of high school. But um, we would get there early, we would check in and then just book it down the beach. I mean, just run as fast as we could. And back then, if you're familiar with any of the beaches in Encinitas and Cardiff and all of that, there was a lot of caves that you could hide in. So we would run as fast as we could, we would ditch into a cave, and then um, we would sit there and hide 
watch the class, you know, all, everybody who was actually doing the class, jog by with the teacher. We would walk out, <laughs> we would go back to our car and um, we would partake in um, an activity that is now legal that was not legal when we were in high school. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, but I ain't gonna say it. So, and it, I got an A in that class. And that is like, that is the epitome of my high school experience. Just like yesterday, I, um, I went and I told you about how I broke into my sixth grade classroom and I saved the baby gophers. I continued that very mischievous way of living my entire life and all through my high school. Lonnie, who is your favorite content creator? <sighs> Gosh, aside from Robert, my son, I absolutely am loving, <sighs> who am I loving? I, I follow a lot of people on um, TikTok and a lot of them, I really like a lot of the satire um, of like what's going on in the world today. I absolutely love that. And who uh, kind of put me on the spot a little bit. And I, I just, you know what? I just, I, I, I follow the mommy farmer. I love her farm. Um, there's the one lady who, who has a pack of potatoes. I absolutely love her. So there are a, um, oh, Mystic One. Hi from Encinitas. Hello. I actually grew up in Encinitas and graduated from San Diego in the class of 1982. So did, are you, did you grow up there or did you just move there? And um, it was a lot of fun. Okay. So <laughs> Courtney, Courtney can see me sweating. All of a sudden I'm like, <sighs> but you know what? And that's just the whole thing. It's, it's like every, I, it's so weird. TikTok, and I'm sorry, TikTok, but TikTok is so weird right now because it's like the, the content is just completely different. And there was a, a gentleman on there that I've been following since the very beginning, since I've been on TikTok, who does like a really cool kind of like stop action kind of film where he like jumps and then he takes a picture and it makes it look like he jumps. He does these really cool transitions for outfit changes. And I absolutely love him, but he hasn't been on for a while. And I just saw him posting recently and he's like, yeah, I haven't been on for a while. I have some things going on and I just don't feel like I belong on TikTok anymore. And I have been struggling with that myself. I mean, TikTok is no longer the content, um, is no longer the platform that it was back in, um, back in 2019 to 2020 when I started. And it's not to say that it's a bad platform. It's just that it's a different platform. And being that I remember, like I could scroll through my phone and find a dance challenge and, and try that. And now when I scroll through my phone, I mean, I see a lot of like, um, like, hey, this is Karen doing this, or this is this, and, and it hasn't been, Tiffers, thank you so much, I love my lipstick too, and it's no longer really like that app where it's like dance things and stuff like that, so, um, and uh, truthfully, a lot of the people I follow don't pop up on my For You page, and I get that a lot, that a lot of my followers, I don't follow up on their on their for you page. And that's just kind of like, um, Courtney, you keep on asking questions. And that's just kind of like where we are right now. And, but that does not to say that I still don't love TikTok and my platform. It's just, it's a different kind of platform. One that is, um, one that that's constantly changing, but you know what? Change is good. Like Brad Pitt says in world war Z, you know, change is life. We have to change and we have to, we have to just kind of keep on going with the way it is. All right. Now the question I get is what is my favorite city? And truthfully, my favorite city hands down is San Francisco. And it really saddens me. Um, the state in which San Francisco is in right now. And I, when I say that San Francisco is my favorite city, 
I look at San Francisco like when I first started going probably eight years ago. And I remember the stores and just the vibe, and it was so cool. And now, unfortunately, when I go to San Francisco, it's not quite the same vibe. I mean, stores are shut down. Um, it can be a little sketchy. It can be a little scary, and it makes me sad. So, but in my heart of hearts, um, in the heart of hearts, I still would put San Francisco as my favorite city. Claire says, what would you have changed in your past? Well, Claire, you know what? That's an interesting question because I was thinking about that one while I was getting ready. And this question has like a two-part answer to it. For one thing, I'm a firm believer that my past happens for a reason. It happened for a reason so I could be who I was today. And I 100% um, believe that in my heart, but that doesn't mean that there aren't things that I wouldn't change. And what I would change is um, I would have quit drinking when my children were younger. And I, I'm going to cry. And the only thing, the only regret I have in life, and the only one that I can't get over, and the only wound that stays fresh in my soul is what I did to my kids. And being raised by an alcoholic mother is devastating. And I devastated my children. It's just the way it is. I can't, I can't soften it in any way. Because I feel like if I soften it, then I um, devaluate their experience. And what they experienced is something that no child should have to experience. You should have a warm, a warm loving mother, not a, um, bye Connie, have fun at your granddaughter's, um, um, ha have fun at your granddaughter's graduation. And it just, it is, it, it, it's just something that, like I said, it's a wound that it doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't um, consume me. But it is one that I cannot, um, I can't heal because it is hurting your children. So that's the only thing I would have changed. I would have changed um, getting sober way before I did. And, um, but being that I um, couldn't and I didn't, Ellie says um, that is the hardest thing. It really is. And you know what? And truthfully, in all honesty, that one day that I was laying in bed and I decided I wanted to be sober, I actually thought about the fact that I was going to have to face my past sober and I was going to have to face what, um, what I did to my kids sober. And I knew that there was a chance that I could have never, um, I never could fix those bridges, but I knew it was worth trying. And I knew it was something that I at least had to try to do. And fast forward to today, I mean, I have a very good relationship with my children. I love them, they love me. And um, I'm very, very happy and very, very pleased over it. So that's the only thing I would change. I, would, I wouldn't change any of the hardships I went through, I would only change the hardships that I, um, I bestowed on my children because I felt like I should have learned more instead of getting consumed by what happened to me. I should have been more, um, worried about what was happening to them. So there you go. Um, you are a total vibe today. Well, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, no, I got my little strappy thing on and oh my gosh, it is like, oh, it's rubbing underneath my arms, but it makes my back feel so much better. So I'm like, okay, my back feels better, but my armpits hurt. And I'm like, oh, Lonnie, you're just a hot mess. But I would rather have sore underarms than uh, my back hurting. And I think I'm going to look into, you know, it's a good brace, but I know that there's some other ones that have like, that maybe will hit a little bit differently. So I am going to try in uh, maybe a different one, but I, um, I absolutely love the fact that I am sitting up straight and my shoulders are back and my back pain is less. All right, Courtney, what is my signature scent? I absolutely love Happy by Clinique. That one is my all time favorite. And it reminds me 
of my sister. I love the smell. I love the concept. I love the name. So I will put happy all over me because it makes me happy. Um, I'm living for this makeup look. Can you share your lip color, please? Absolutely, I can because I came prepared. Also, too, um, I have my foundation that I wore yesterday that I'm wearing again today. So I tried this um, light blue, didn't like it. Somebody recommended the KVD, which is Kat Von, Kat Von D, Kat Von D, um, her lipstick brand. And this one is Scorp number 85, Scorpius. And it's like a permanent, it's kind of like a lip stain. Absolutely love it. And um, yeah, it's, do you see right there? That's what's throwing me off. It's because I'm not used to like this really dark lipstick that, um, that is um, not all in there. But I, I think that that may be just the way it looks. And then the foundation that I wore yesterday that somebody asked me about, it's the L'Oreal Infallible 24-Hour um, Pro Glow. And this is in the shade 204, which is natural buff, because I'm buff. And I like this foundation. Now, this foundation, I think, is a really good kind of medium between a BB cream and an actual foundation, and I like this one. Um, she has great makeup. Yeah, you know what? I had never used it before, but I actually really like that lip, um, that lip stain. <coughs> Connie says it's a classic. Yes, it is. Now, do you all remember Jean Nate? I mean, if you are not from the 70s, you're not going to remember Jean Nate. But I remember just wanting one of those gift boxes of Jean Nate where it was like 32 different ways how to apply this fragrance. And you could bathe in it. You could shower with it. You could put the lotion on. And then you put on like um, the spray after that or then like the body stuff kitty remembers it and i mean and that was not a light smelling um fragrance and oh my gosh yes oh yes michelle the after bath splash yes and i think if there is a scent that really reminds me of my childhood it would be jean nate and then um noxima noxima reminds me so much of my grandma that every once in a while I'll buy a jar of um, new, or of Noxzema and I will use that as my face cleanser. And it actually works really well. So between Jeanette and Noxzema, I, I mean, I just have like these two alternating scents, but um, I absolutely love it. Now, um, Courtney says, I still use Noxzema. Yeah, you know what? Noxzema is a good product. And sometimes we get so caught up on current things and, um, and current things and then like newfangled things that sometimes just going back old school like Noxzema and Vaseline, you can get some really good um, results out of it. At least I think so. Um, Dag says you are more than strong. Your children got to watch you change for them and yourself. They got to also learn what happens and what not to do. They know you're sorry, but know you'll spend the rest of your life trying to make up for that and carry that guilt forever. Yes. And we're actually now the really cool thing about that is that we are actually in counseling together. And I'm very open about that because what had happened is, is that from my childhood, I never learned how to communicate. And then I never taught my children how to communicate. And then all of a sudden there's three adults who really want to like have a relationship with each other, who really want to like speak healthily to each other, but none of us knew how. So we have done, we go, um, and we have like a, um, zoom meeting with a therapist once a month where we learn how to listen and we learn how to communicate and it's never too late it's never too late to learn those skills so if you're out there and you have like this communication block with a loved one keep trying try new things reach out for help just don't ever be like well this is just the way it is 
because that's not the case it is. Um, Courtney says, biggest brush with a celebrity. Oh, gosh. Um, I saw Steve Garvey in the airport one time. And if you don't know who Steve Garvey is, he was a Dodger baseball player who transferred over to the San Diego Padres. And this was in the early 80s. So he was like a huge baseball star back then. And I saw him in the San Diego airport. And my sister and I screamed like two little schoolgirls. And I still remember him. Yeah, Courtney remembers him. And I still remember he just kind of laughed and shook his head and kept walking. Um, I helped um, Ken Winslow of the San Diego Chargers one time um, at a bank in Mira Mesa. Very nice guy. Very soft-spoken. Very, very nice guy. And then I opened up an account um, for Refrigerator Perry's cousin. Remember him? He was like the Chicago Bear linebacker who was like as big as a refrigerator. Well, I remember I, um, I opened up an account for his cousin. But probably the closest, closest brush with a celebrity, and I mean, I actually went to high school with him, is Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam. And back then he was Eddie Mueller. So I went to high school with the lead singer, lead singer of Pearl Jam. And we used to hang out um, in, at lunch. And he was a really nice guy. And he was really cool. And yeah, Eddie Vedder. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's in my yearbook. And I, like I said, he was a really cool guy. He was part of the surf crowd. I hung out um, with them. And um, that is the closest connection to a celebrity I have. Now, Pedro, if you're out there, we can make this a little bit closer if you know what I mean. And um, wink, wink. <laughs> If, if my, if my, if Robert and Brandon watch this, they are going to so cringe, but I just don't care. And, um, yeah. And, um, yeah. So Pedro, give the girl a call. All right. My husband was raised, Dag says, my husband was raised that way. A man could never show emotion or open up about his feelings. We've been together for 15 years. We grew up together instead of being able to grow old together. It took. We grew up together instead of being able to grow up to grow old together. It took, yeah. And you know what? And that's just the thing, Daz, because it's like, uh, I mean, I know where I got my communication from. Um, and am I in San Diego? Yes, I am just outside of San Diego. But I know that, and here's the thing. It's like, okay, so on Monday, I took the, um, the love language quiz. And sometimes I think that, um, I think that people show love in way, the only ways that they know how. Now, if your husband is like, um, and I don't know him, but if your husband is like, um, like kind of like closed in and can't share his emotions, he might try to show it in other ways. And, you know, maybe a gift giving or like a little brush on your arm. And so what I'm going to do is for my um, part of my subject on Monday is going to be how once we know our partners are our loved ones love language, <clears throat> how do we learn to incorporate it into our lives so that way we can um, so that we can appreciate it and we can enjoy it. Because, I mean, all day long I can be like, well, you know, Brandon likes love like this and Robert likes love like that. <clears throat> but how do I incorporate that into my daily lives so it becomes like flourishing? So that's what that's what I'm going to be working on next. Um, oh, hi, we are both in North County too. No need to answer if you're not comfortable. Um Oh, cool. So I have a lot of people from North County. Now, my aunt grew up in, or my aunt lived in Escondido. She used to live in Vista. She used to live in Escondido. I had another aunt in Escondido, but the majority of my family was in Encinitas. And little known fact is my mom and I went to the same elementary school. And then my mom, my dad, my sister, and I all graduated from San Diego. So we are very much, we had a lot of roots back then. So now, yeah, so Eddie Vedder and I went to high school together and that was fun. And another question that I get is if I could travel, what city would I like to see? And 
I, hands down, without even thinking about it, I would say New York City. I've always been fascinated with New York City because there are still, um, there's so much history and so much like you walk down a street and that's been there for however many years. And to me, there's just so much, um, there's so much culture and there's just so much history there. So New York City is definitely on my bucket list and fingers crossed if all this works out i'll be going to new york city in october to film a commercial and i can't say any more than that but i'm super excited and i um, will share the details as they come on or come up or that i'm able to but i'm just like yes yes i so want to do this and I so want to go to New York. So fingers crossed that it works out. Courtney says, um, favorite weirdest food combo. That's a tough one if you want to skip it. No, are you kidding? Bring it on. Um, weird, weirdest food combo is, you know what? I put ketchup on my grilled cheese sandwiches. How's that for you? That is just, it, it's like, to me, it's like, um, you know how you're supposed to have tomato soup and a grilled cheese sandwich for a comfort food? To me, ketchup is just really thick tomato soup. And um, <laughs> it's not weird. You should try it. It is actually really good. And like I said, it's like having tomato soup and a grilled cheese sandwich. It's just thicker and cold. But try it. I, Courtney, okay. I, you can double dare me to try something. Um, yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I'm going to double dog dare you, um, to try that. Um, and if you wanted to double dog dare me to try something, I would, but I want you to try it and see what you think. Um, oh, hi says ranch dressing on KFC mashed potatoes. You know, that actually sounds really yummy. I think it would make them more creamy, but that's a really cool idea. I never thought about that. And I love KFC mashed potatoes. You know, KFC mashed potatoes reminds me again of Jeanette and Noxima. But remember when our TV dinners were like in um, tin and you had to put them in the oven and they always like baked your fake mashed potatoes to the point where they were like all crispy around the edge and kind of pulling in. I absolutely love love those mashed potatoes. And while mashed potatoes are my favorite one comfort food, then um, I also um, think that like really weird mashed potatoes are also my comfort food. Um, let's see. Dag says about Eddie Vedder, he's an artist as in, in a band and writes me songs. Oh, your husband is an artist and he's in the band and writes you songs that he just shares with me. He also paints pictures of us. So I always know through his lyrics, writings and painting, um, that's how he showed me. That's really cool. And you know what, and I, I love the fact that you know his love language and you know how he's showing love and you're able to appreciate that. And I think that that's really cool. I, I, I do love that. So, so weird mashed potatoes, but mashed potatoes straight down are my comfort food. So if ever I am feeling like blah, I will get myself, um, I will get myself a big old bowl of mashed potatoes and just eat those. Courtney says, I like tomato slices with mayo. It's not that weird, but my husband roasts me for it. I like mayonnaise on just about everything. You know, I'll put mayonnaise, sometimes, like, if I don't have sour cream, I'll put mayonnaise in my tacos, um, which is, could be kind of weird, but I love street corn, and that has mayonnaise and cheese and all of that on there, um, so, yeah, no, mayonnaise, you either love it or you hate it. Now, what I have been seeing all over TikTok lately is um, cottage cheese, and I've always liked cottage cheese. In fact... Here's a little unknown fact for you, is that remember I keep on saying that my childhood was kind of tough? Well, it was kind of tough to the point where I actually developed kind of like a little bit of an eating disorder. And I'm talking like when I was like five or six. And I also, in order to cope with everything that was going on, I used to pretend like I was a dog. And I would only eat two things for dinner. 
I would eat cottage cheese and I would also eat um, hamburger buns that were broiled. So you had to open up the hamburger buns, you had to put a little butter on them, you had to stick them in the broiler and toast them. Those are the only two things I ate. So you wonder why I only weighed like 45 pounds in, in um, elementary school. But anyway, so not only would I only eat cottage cheese, but I would not eat it with my hands because dogs don't use forks, all right? So I would sit there and I would um, eat my cottage cheese with my face at the dinner table. And it got to the point where my mom was like so worried about me not eating at all, she didn't care. So long as I was eating, she's like, you go for it. You eat it and pretend to be whatever animal you wanted to be. But I would just be there, I'd be like, nom, 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 nom. And then that's, that's how I ate, and you know what? And amazingly, I survived my childhood and I still love cottage cheese today. But what I was going for is that there are all sorts of cottage cheese recipes right now to where you can make cottage cheese bread, cottage cheesecake, cottage cheese um, um, ice cream. And for me, the best way that I like to eat my cottage cheese is I like cottage cheese and spaghetti. And it just makes it cheesier. It kind of turns my spaghetti into a lasagna. So if you haven't tried that, I would suggest that. So any sort of cottage cheese with your pasta to me makes it more like a lasagna. Okay, Courtney says, what movie can you watch over and over? That movie that comes on TV and you still sit down and watch it every time. <sighs> There's so many. Um, I absolutely am a sucker for Forrest Gump. I love Forrest Gump. I just love the... I love the movie. It's a great movie. Um, aliens, I, I, if Aliens comes on, no, Aliens 2, it's specific. It has to be Aliens 2, the one with Sigourney Weaver when she gets into the big robot and she's like, you stay away from her, you bitch. I absolutely, I, I will watch that one over and over and over again. Um, there's a whole lot of them. Any Wes Anderson movie. Um, I'll be, I can be scrolling around and, um, Hotel Budapest will come on and I'll just be like, well, I'm just going to watch this for the 400th time. And I don't care. I will, um, I will absolutely watch that over and over again. Um, Cordy says, I'm a sucker for Clueless and Couples Retreat. You know what? Okay. I've never seen the movie Clueless never have watched it. So yeah. What do you think about that? I mean, should I watch it? Is it that good of a, <gasps> hello, Golf Widow 52. How are you, my friend? Um, I know, Courtney. All right. So maybe over the weekend, I will watch Clueless for the first time because um, I just watched, uh, what was it? Fatal Attraction for the first time. So I'm kind of like a little behind the times, I think. So, you know, crazy. Oh, really quick, Courtney, I know that you're, you can watch me on YouTube. I just want to make sure, a little side note, but is the audio and the video synced up really good? Um, that's what I was working on yesterday. I know Valerie tried to jump in and watch, excuse me, watch my video and it was um, moved to private. Um, it's not, okay, so it's not synced. I was afraid of that. YouTube lags. All right. So, okay, we're going to have to, um, I'm going to have to work on that. I might switch back to my, um, uh, so, okay, Courtney, um, TikTok is crystal clear. Okay, because what I'm worried about, and really truthfully what I'm worried about is my, 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 um, my visual on YouTube. And I don't want it to be where it's kind of like I'm moving my lips, but the audio sounds like I'm doing a voiceover. And that's what I'm trying to stay away from because right now what I'm doing is, is I'm streaming through Streamlabs. And for some reason, um, I think I'm just gonna have to move right over to just streaming on um, YouTube. and and get rid of the stream labs because it's driving me crazy. Cause I really want the quality of my audio and I want the quality of my video to be really good. And if there's any sort of lagging, that is not going to work for me. So we're going to have to work on that. So, um, 
Okay, so Claire says YouTube is fine in the UK. That is so weird. Okay, well, I'm going to mess around with it on the weekend because when I come back on um, Monday, I want to make sure, again, that I have a video and audio that is absolutely perfect for you. Now, again, remember, Memorial is... Um, Oh, you have them both streaming at the same time. Okay, because remember, it's Memorial Day. I'm still going to be back Monday because I have um, nowhere to go. Um, okay, Z says, this is random, but would you ever get a blackout tattoo? Absolutely. I think that they are super sexy. I've seen the, the machines that they use for a blackout tattoo, and those are absolutely intimidating. A blackout tattoo, the... the the, the needles on this one are about this big one. And it looks intense, but I think they are unique and I think they are sexy. So yes, I would get a blackout tattoo. Dag says, Casino is one of my favorite movies and Mermaids with Cher. I have not seen that movie in such a long time, but I absolutely um, agree. And I think Moonstruck with Cher is a really good movie also. And... Um, I, I think Cher is amazing. So she is, again, right up there with my artists that are absolutely uh, my idols. So, um, yeah. So Monday, I'll be back on Monday. Monday's Memorial Day. I'm going to keep be keeping my eye open for free people if they have anything on sale on their apps. I will post something if I see that come up. So if you're looking for any good Memorial Day sales, I will definitely keep you updated on anything that I see. Claire, Pretty Woman is absolutely probably the only rom-com that I will watch, and I absolutely love that movie. Um, oh, Linda says, I remember everyone got Jean Nate for Christmas. Yeah, I mean, that was like the perfect Christmas gift. Um, so what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, Monday. Okay, Monday I'm going to be back. We're going to talk a little bit about, again, the love language and about, um, oh, so Thrifty Threads in Encinitas has a free people rack. That's really cool because that's my favorite thrift store in Encinitas. In fact, my mom used to go to a used bookstore there all the time, and my dad would go to that coin shop that's right there. And um, I've been to Thrifty Threads. I just don't get down there as much as I should. Um, I had a couple of people tell me about, or I had um, somebody on YouTube tell me about the Buffalo Exchange. I found two of those in San Diego and two of those in Orange County. So I'm going to be hitting those tattoo shops. Um, I'm going to be hitting the Orange County ones, I think, next week. So um, on Monday, I'll be back. I'm going to buzz my hair live on... Um, uh, who? So, Mr. At, do you, I don't know. Thank you, honey. Um, it's right in front of the dressing room. Okay. Mandy says, your lips are blue. Yes, they are blue because I put blue lipstick on. And that's what happens when you wear blue lipstick. Um, so, I'm going to buzz my hair on Monday. I figured out that what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover my keyboard with a with a towel so that way I don't get hair all I know it's like let's point out the obvious but I'm going to put a towel over my keyboard so then that way I don't um I don't get hair in the keyboard. I'm going to push my chair back a little bit. You know, the one that's suffering because I'm sitting on it. And then I'm going to buzz my hair live on Monday. Um, it needs a little trim and it's not too overgrown. So I figured that would be a fun thing to do. Um, I think that that would be a fun thing to do on Monday. So on Monday, I'll be back even though it's Memorial Day and I'll be buzzing my hair live. I have my little, um, my little cape already, and I will give my hair a nice little buzz on, on Monday, and it will be fun, and you are all invited. So yeah, Courtney, I love this Q&A. We're going to do Q&A Fridays. I think it's super fun. It's super like, um, like uh, what's the word that I'm thinking about, where we kind of, it's <laughs> intimate. It's kind of an intimate experience where we can just get to know each other a little bit more because I really like the simple fact that we have a, 
Um, the, oh, the Witches of Eastwick with Cher is great. I also love The Death Becomes Her. Yes, The Witches of Eastwick is a classic. Um, so we are doing our Q&As on Fridays. Again, I just love it. That way we can get to know each other a little bit more. And we can always, um, it's called a bank holiday in Monday in the UK. You know, here's the thing is, is I didn't get, um, I didn't understand what the bank holiday thing was all about until I put two and two together. And I'm like, why are they celebrating the bank? You know, what is so great about the bank? Is it like Christmas? And then I'm like, no, Lonnie, it's because the banks are closed. So it's a bank holiday. So yeah, it took me a little bit to um, figure that one out. But I, um, yeah, but I get that. See what I mean? Um, the questions are coming in really late on YouTube. Yeah, you know what? And that's just the thing, Courtney, is, is like, I've been really struggling with, um, I know that, I, what I wanted to do is I want the video, especially the playback video, not so much, um, I have to go for a bit, how can I contact you outside of here? Um, we can, um, now are you talking to Courtney? Because I think that you all can follow each other and then what I would suggest you do is find each other on Instagram because it's super easy to DM each other on Instagram. Um, but I'm just worried about the quality control of the video and the audio on my replay videos. So not only live, but when people go back to watch them later, I want to make sure that everything is synced up in the, um, in the playback video. That's what I'm getting at. So, all right, everyone. I love you dearly. Courtney, you need to find Dags on Instagram, Facebook. Um, y'all just, you can communicate with each other here. Um, your eye makeup today looks incredible. Eyes look fantastic and big. Thank you. I decided to go with a violet. This is from H&M, and I absolutely love this lilac color. All right. Well, I'm going to be off. I'm going to go do. Um, I'm going to go do a recording at um, a resale shop today. Not a thrift store. This is an actual resale shop where they either they go thrifting stuff or people go and sell them items. So I thought that that would be a nice little mix up between actual thrift. So I'm going to be doing that. You all be, um, you all be super, super safe and have a great weekend. I will, um, yes, most awesome lives ever. Thank you so much. And I will be back on Monday. Remember, be safe. Have a great holiday. Um, join me Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I'm going to be buzzing my hair. So I love you all dearly, and I will see you on Monday.